This is the Barry Richard Show. WBSM On Demand. Hey, Ariel. How are you? I'm good. I just want to tell you, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. I I'm listening to your voice. That. You're very professional. I'm very happy that you're with us. Thank you. I appreciate that. It means yeah. a lot. Oh, well, yeah. So did you get outside for the eclipse at all? I did, yes. You okay? Yeah, I did. I had the glasses. <laughs> I didn't look with my with my naked eye, um, but it was really cool. It was, yeah. I, I, my daughter got these um, uh, glasses from the school, and we put them over the camera lens, and we're filming upward with the roof um, just giving us the shadow, and then we just made sure it was going. We got some pretty good shots. That's cool. Yeah. You can feel the difference in the temperature. Yes. That might give them some ideas about maybe cooling the world off, put a big blanket up there or something. <laughs> block block <laughs> it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so another 20 years, I guess we have to wait. I'm not going to hold my breath. But yeah. people were saying it was the most beautiful experience. It was a spiritual thing. I, I thought it was cool. Yeah. I love astronomy and all that, but I, I don't necessarily think it was the greatest experience of my life. Yeah. I would like to travel somewhere to get the totality. The yes. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, some of the footage, I, I don't think I was prepared to see things get that dark. I thought, you know, because I've, I've never been in a full eclipse. I'm partial always, but um, in my life as, a, as far as I know. But th- it was really astounding how dark things got yeah. in the direct uh, eclipse, the full eclipse. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So um, now I don't know much about you. Are you from this area? So I grew up in Rhode Island. Okay. Um, and then we've, my family has been living here since like 2019, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I live in Fall River now. Um, I'm not, I don't know too much. Um, I feel like I'm still kind of getting used to the South Coast. That's going to (laughs) change. That's going to change. But, um, no, I know I can tell you because I'm not here often. I just put my head down and mind my business, but everybody here is very happy with you so far. I can tell you that. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank you for joining me today too. Of course. All right. So I'm going to, well, we were talking about the Karen Reed trial and we can continue with that if you want. I'm, I'm, again, I'm very excited about the NFL draft with the great unknowns of the New England Patriots. I don't know what to think of this brain trust. It's, a, it's the first time in um, 24 years that Bill Belichick will not be calling the shots in the draft. So um, there's some anxiety there for Patriot Nation. Uh, I, I mentioned in the first, in, in the before the news break, I am of the opinion that with the right package, I would slide down a little bit and get a few more picks because this team needs a lot of help. Um, I'm not sold on any of these quarterbacks as a surefire franchise quarterback. Um, and I even get laughed at it for the guy I want. I want to see. But uh, Penix or Knicks, I would want over the rest because you can get them later. That's my thinking. Um, and, you know, Penix has the best arm in the draft. Um Bo Nix has progressed so much that it's tough for me not to... I've watched so much of the Oregon season that I, I'm just a big fan. Uh, I don't know what's more impressive, his NCAA breaking, record-breaking uh, 77.4% uh, completion percentage. Uh, he, he, he scored 51 touchdowns between passing and running in 2023. 51. But one thing that really gets me... Almost as impressive, maybe more impressive for some. He dropped back 470 times and was only sacked five times. Jaden Daniels dropped back 327 times, was sacked 22 times. There's not a stat where I feel uncomfortable about thinking this guy can come right in and produce. You never know, though. Look, the first player in the draft taken last year, right? Uh, Bryce was taken by the Carolina Panthers with the number one pick. They traded away their this year's first round pick to the Bears, and he's been terrible. The number two pick, the Houston Texans, got maybe a premier quarterback. I mean, if you go by the second half last year, Stroud looks all world. So it's a 50-50 maybe. I mean, you've had so many good quarterbacks drafted late, including... Kid who was taken here in 2000, Tom Brady, with the 199th pick in the sixth round. Uh, that, that 2020 class with uh, Lawrence and Mac Jones and Trey Lance, Fields, Wilson, all of them went early in the first or to mid first. 
and the kid who's playing the best mate. Well, Lawrence, when he plays and he's healthy, he looks good now. He's figured it out, it looks like. But this kid from the fifth round, right, Brock Purdy, brought his team to the Super Bowl, the San Fran team, playing well, not making a lot of mistakes. My thinking is there are some epic offensive tackles. We need tackles. There's an incredibly deep pool of talented wide receivers. There are no fewer than 15 wide receivers who will start in the NFL on a regular basis by the end of next year. Some of them immediately. And then you have your top three quarterbacks, but then the next three, I'm just as comfortable with drafting in the mid first round to the early second round as I am drafting the other three in the top. But then you don't get the extra picks if you draw, if you if you pick one of them at three, and that would be Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels or Drake May. But J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, I think are right with those guys, and you can get them later. Be interesting to see what the Patriots' ticket prices are going to be looking like because the uh, the odds makers have already stated the Patriots as le- more likely than every other team to lose the most games. Not a lot of optimism out in Vegas for New England. And the, and the roster isn't even settled. Um, but they were underwhelmed with the free agency and they certainly don't think the rookies can make much of a difference immediately. Red Sox look to be racing to the bottom. With this roster, unless they shock everybody, they're expected to be one of the first teams eliminated. The Bruins and the Celtics are carrying the the region once again. Tell me you're not planning on paying for this. What is his name? Logan Paul? Mike Tyson fight? This is how silly things have gotten. This guy is not deserving of a payday. He's making more money than some of the best boxers in the world. And it's really just a curiosity factor. People want to see how far he can take it without getting knocked out or stopped. He keeps fighting retired, older fighters. And people are impressed with him. It's like, you know, if I was a a YouTuber, (laughs) right? That's all he is, really. It's a new profession. YouTube influencer. Me stepping up to plate and, and challenging Roger Clemens if I was 30 and he was 59. You're not getting the, the real Roger Clemens. You're getting the old man Roger Clemens. Who cares if you hit one? But this is how silly the, the public is. I'm hoping Tyson just flattens him because now the sailing has been found in people's curiosity factor. His revenues will go down. I mean, he's... Unless he's a fool, he's going to remain filthy rich still, but. I don't know. The sports world is getting weird. Five oh eight nine nine six oh five hundred is a a, New York Post has got this article. Um, It's not their article. They're, They're sort of reporting on this problem that scientists are seeing where there's a strange amount of cancers developing in younger people because of an accelerated aging, which may be due to inactivity. Right, as we go forward here in science, as medical science improves or progresses, we should see longer lifespans. And it has not really worked out because people aren't getting outside and exercising. They're not being as physical as they were. And there's so there's some things that develop in the body as because of the inactivity. And vaping probably has something to do with this. I'm telling you, I, I read some loose links to this, but vaping, how people feel comfortable with it. Uh, uh, we're going to find out things, I think. In the pop world, the biggest story that I saw, the, the funniest one to me, is that there's all kinds of concern for Jackie Chan, the Asian star, because uh, he showed, there were some pictures of him and he had gray hair. He's 70. 
Jackie Chan, 70, responds to concerns about his health after alarming photos. He's wearing eyeglasses and he's 70. Oh, no, he looks like he's 58. There must be something wrong. <laughs> he has been quasi-immortal, right? He's still doing all those stunts or up, up until recently, all those amazing stunts at his age. That's really crazy. But, he, you know, he doesn't look terrible at all to me. Thanks for calling. You're on the air. Hello. Nobody's there. 508-996-0500. Yeah, he doesn't look bad. I mean, he might look 60, 58. He doesn't look 70. Unless uh, that would, maybe that bought, maybe you thought Saddam Hussein had naturally black hair when he died. Maybe that type, that's why. 508-996-0500. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, Ken, it's Sam. Hey, Sam. Sorry, dealing with the delay. Uh, yeah, I was there. I heard you click over and then it just disconnected on me. So, oh. I don't know. Yeah, it didn't show anything. System. Yeah. What's on How your you mind, doing? my friend? Oh, oh. I, all those topics you've been talking about, is, I'm I'm uh, fascinated with the Karen Reed case. Yeah, it is. It is I a fascinating she, case. I think she's being railroaded. I mean, geez, you know, these guys are all professionals. They, you know, I, I, how can they be so incompetent? Uh, you know, and, again, I, I just think I'm keeping my powder dry because they could nail down all these accusations by the defense one by one for all I know. I don't know what we're going to listen to. I think one of the worst things that they're trying to put over on her is the fact that a taillight broke from hitting a person. I mean, she would have to be doing 70 miles an hour to break a taillight, right? I mean, you can't possibly back into someone and break a taillight. Well, what, do, what, what would it have been, 8 to 12 feet? I don't even know, but still. I mean, you know what, how much force you have to hit that with? I don't know. That that's just, you know, and then like you said, for the chief to be driving by what, a week later, or seven days later, ten days later. I mean, have prosecutors found have they found an ex boyfriend of this girl who showed concerning fits of violence, anything like that? I haven't read. I mean, I, you would think something like that would have come up if there was any sort of pattern. Yeah, and and you had brought up the fact that they didn't confiscate any of the cell phones of the people that were supposed to be at the party. That were at the party. Is that was that true? Yeah. Yeah, they they, they said it was it would, she's just muddying the waters. There's no need to do that. That was how they. But they went through every device in the Martin Walsh household, including right. the child's um, iPad, which is how they discovered the, the Google searches he made about how to get rid of a body. Yeah, well, you know, kids are kids kids are a lot more advanced these days. That yeah, you might need to know. But you know. I don't I don't want to demonize. Um, <laughs> Uh, Trooper Proctor, because th there's no, I, you know, there's no proof he's done anything wrong. There's no, there's nothing but accusations by the defense. The one thing that I clearly am concerned about is the writing down a completely different hour than the hour that the vehicle was impounded, and that's the that's a, the chain of evidence, the articles of, of evidence that when they're, when they're under custody, you got to have those records right, man. Yeah, and I think that's plenty of time to be able to. Crack a tail light and try to. Well, I, th I think that's you know? where the defense is going, and, and that's where I think most people anticipate they're, they're going. Did they bring that stuff to the crime scene where the where they found the two pieces later? And how about the police chief driving by a week later, uh, <laughs> sees a, a very small piece of red glass as he's driving by at dusk and says, "Whoa, what's this?" Yeah, I mean, I, I, how do you back into a, an object and not and, and break a tail light? No, I mean it's not a solid. It's just going to move, right? I mean, is it, is it even possible? Well, they say in, in March of this year, now we're talking, what's that, 26 months after the fact, they, they, they still don't know if it's human hair that they found attached to the taillight. 26 months later. And maybe it's dog hair. That, that doesn't exist. Oh, that poor dog. There's just so many, there's just so many things. You but know, but I, here's I another thing, too. Do you, are you, are you, Sam, are you a dog guy? I have, yeah, well, geez, I have three dogs right. in this house right now. If no, you, if you, daughters. if it just became intolerable for you to keep a, a pet of seven years, would you give it up to a stranger without making sure it's a good home? No, none of that makes sense either. Yeah, they don't know where it went. Every path you, yeah, every path you go down, yeah, right. You're not going to, you're not going to know where the dog went. I mean, it's, at least they could have said the dog ran away or something. But, if I know. gave my dog away, first of all, all my bags would be in on the, 
on the porch. <laughs> that dog's more loved than me. Uh, cricket. Well, we lost Cricket recently. Uh, we had to put her down. Oh, for a very tough time. Yeah. But 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 if she was healthy, I wouldn't consider giving her away. And if I did, if I had to, I would make right. sure I'm comfortable with the people they're giving it to. Never mind. I have no idea where she went. Right. You wouldn't just give it away that. That bugs me. And yeah. the biggest problem, maybe for the prosecutors, is the FBI's own three experts saying mm. that there's no way that SUV killed um, John O'Keefe. Did they determine a the cause of death? Have they actually come up with the actual cause? I mean, massive trauma to the head is uh, clear in the autopsy. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Yeah. Hypothermia, uh, hy hypothermia, by the way. It was hypothermia, I think, was the determining cause, but due to his inability to wake up and get out of the cold. Right. Got a break from commercial, Sam. Thanks. Bye. Good to hear from you. We'll be back. Pittman. This is the Ken Pittman Show on 1420 WPSM. Caller, veteran National Public Radio, that's an NPR, veteran NPR editor, Yuri Berliner, published an essay Tuesday exposing the government's funded outlets' alleged bias during the President Donald Trump's presidency. Very rare to get uh, somebody in that position to speak about this. So Berliner published this Tuesday, uh, today, And he was with NPR for 25 years as an editor and in the essay published in the Free Press that the outlet was striving to take down Trump during his presidency by citing Russia collusion allegations that were later debunked. He also asserts that all levels of the organization were aligned on the prioritization of race and identity leading to a lack of viewpoint diversity and increase in diversity, equity and inclusion, the DEI initiatives. Persistent rumors that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia over the election became the catnip that drove reporting, he wrote. At NPR, we hitched our wagon to Trump's most visible antagonist, Representative Adam Schiff. How can you trust Adam Schiff? He has Andy Kaufman eyes. But what began as tough, straightforward coverage of a belligerent, truth-impaired president veered toward efforts to damage or topple Trump's presidency, he added. Berliner also criticized the outlet's managing editor for neglecting to cover the Hunter Biden laptop story during the 2020 presidential election, saying, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste the listeners and readers' time on stories that are just pure distractions. NPR also based reporting on former director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci's statements on the COVID-19 pandemic originating naturally, according to Berliner. We became fervent members of Team Natural Origin, even declaring that the, le the lab leak had been debunked by scientists, but that wasn't the case. We're living in a dangerous time when it comes to trying to get it to truth. You get a battle for it. In Russia, you had Pravda and TASS, the two main newspapers, and the state told them what they could write, what they couldn't write, how they should write, how they shouldn't write. When the fall of the, Berl the uh, Berlin Wall, when all that happened and the Soviet Union collapsed and it was down to Russia, there was the illusion of free press, <clears throat> but instead of telling the press what to do and what to say, the press was threatened first. And if they wrote it anyway, there was an, a real shortage of quality railings on the fifth floor of many hotels. I don't know how you can insure a, a hotel in Moscow with all these people falling off shortly after their articles are, are published. 
Um, but how far are we from this, right? So the FBI showed up at a Michigan Muslim woman's door the other day. And she recorded it. She's very adamant online, pro-Palestinian. I don't share her opinions. But I defend her right to say it if she's not breaking any laws. We have a First Amendment here. I mean, as a threat to Joe Biden for her support, I think and many other Muslims in Michigan are either going to stay out of it or threatening to, to vote in the other, the other direction. So they're leveraging Joe Biden to change his position on his pro-Israeli, the idea that he's pro-Israeli. Um, I, think, I think he's at best keeping an eye on who, where the votes can be found. He's not in an enviable position because the Jewish lobby, the money... The votes, he's weighing against the Arab-American pro-Palestinian votes, and that's that's the problem with being president. Uh, the, the contender, the one waiting to face you, doesn't have the same level of concentration on you. Anyway, the FBI knocked on the door. They said they want to talk to her about the posts that she's been making on I think Facebook. And she said, why? Did I break any laws? And they said, no. She said, well, then get off my property. She asked them to identify themselves a second time, and she didn't catch it, and they wouldn't produce their credentials. So it was three agents. And some are saying they should be fired. I Look, they, they're being sent there. They're, they're doing their job. They're, they're not deciding where to go. Um, if they're field agents, they're being told where to go. I wouldn't fire them. They are supposed to know civil rights better than the average police officer or the average American. And she reminded them, I don't have to talk to you. Have, have I broken a law? Well, then get off my property, she said. They said, look, we do this every day, all day. Really? So think about that. They admitted that they're perusing through the Internet looking for people making political statements they don't approve of so they can talk to them. What they're basically doing is intimidating them not to make such statements. She was calling Joe Biden genocide Joe. Can't have that. It's, a, it's a, an abuse of power to dedicate FBI agents to something like that. Um, we have a lot of problems in this country. I mean, they just caught an 18-year-old boy up in Idaho who was going to blow up churches for, for ISIS. Uh, we have, what, 8 million people that have come in the country since November? Or since, uh, I'm sorry, the beginning of 2023, 8 million that we were estimating? How many are terrorists? How many are operatives from foreign nations that hate us, waiting for marching orders? And they're perusing Facebook for the threats. <laughs> and don't forget, the FBI uh, is under the impression that uh, MAGA is the biggest threat. Right wing's the biggest threat to America right now. With all the hell that's out there, they had the audacity to state that as their biggest concern. <laughs> uh, the other thing I did want to talk about, the South Carolina coach is a, is a great basketball coach, uh, the women's basketball coach. They just went 38-0, and undefeated season. She was asked about transgender athletes playing uh, women's basketball, and she said, well, if somebody believes they're a woman, they should be able to play. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed because I don't think she thinks that. I think she's paralyzed with fear of saying anything differently. We're seeing so many videos, so many examples of those born female playing sports against those who identify as females and getting really injured as a result. 
it's not an equal playing field, which is what is supposed to happen, right? I mean, if somebody has testosterone flowing through their veins, through their bones, their blood, their muscles for so many years, that is an incredible advantage, physical advantage over those who never had it. If, they, if, if you don't believe that, then there's no use even going further. It's an unfair advantage. And I love the question posed in Congress when this matter went to the floor. Well, so if Mike Tyson identified as a woman, he should be able to go to into the uh, women's boxing division. And, of course, the person who answered the question on behalf of transgender athletes said yes. <laughs> you know they didn't believe that. Come on. Now, you do. You will have, on occasion, female athletes who are stronger than a lot of men. A lot of women in bodybuilding and things like that, they do steroids. They introduce male hormones to do that. But it's not allowed in sports. And so if somebody has a steroid like testosterone that developed naturally, that's an unfair advantage over those who've never had it. And that's it. How can you argue with that? And without any introducing any political leanings or anything, that alone excludes the competition from being fair or precludes it from being fair. It just can't be considered fair. And so this coach, who I, I think is a very good coach, I mean, obviously, the best program in the country, didn't lose a game. She was called an intellectual coward. I won't go that far. I think I, think I understand why would she want to give up that gig if it's not going to make a difference. But you're not getting people to be candid on this because they're afraid of the consequences because of the bullying tactics. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. Governor Mara Healy condemning the Trump statement on abortion. Trump is disappointing a lot of conservatives who are hoping he creates a national ban for abortion and. He's done more for the pro-life movement than any president in history. The revocation of Roe v. Wade is only because Donald Trump was president and selected a conservative court. And so he's got a little capital here to, to push back and not uh, ostracize uh, some pro-choice people. He's saying, look... It's gone back to the states. If it's the will of the people of the state that abortion should be accessible, it's going to be accessible. If it's not, then that's the way it goes. That's how it works. That is, in my opinion, that's how the Constitution is supposed to work. I mean, there's... And by the way, Maura Healy has volunteered your tax dollars to provide abortions for women from all 50 states if they can get here to Massachusetts. She has already told as many illegal immigrants that can get here, please feel free to my constituents' money. She hasn't changed from that either. She's just trying to find ways to pay for it now that she's running out of money. Dipping into other funds. She's far worse as a nut job than I originally had feared. Uh, some states are coming to their senses. Uh, Eric Adams, the New York mayor. You know, he's got this problem with uh, Abbott, Governor Abbott in, in Texas, who's flying people uh, and busing people to, to uh, liberal sanctuary cities like New York. Wow, Eric Adams, what do you get to say about Joe Biden? That's, that's who he should be focused on. Biden has flown, what was it, uh, was it 33,000 migrants just to New York, flown them. So he's flying illegal immigrants all over the country, dispersing them all over the country without paying for it. It's on you. It's on the city of New York, these 33,000. 
And the only objections that we're seeing, the real biggest objection was the one plane with 54 people flown from Florida to Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard, who has the most room for people in, in eastern Massachusetts. They said there's no jobs here. They can't, they can't be here. And they didn't, you know who they, they called the army. <laughs> After they felt good about themselves on Martha's Vineyard for being California. verbally kind to the 52 illegal migrants, they gave them cheese sandwiches and t-shirts from Savers and said, there, 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 there's the ferry, here's the army, go away. Well, coming back in a moment, you're listening to The Barry Richard Show, Ken Pittman filling in. Show, 1420 WBSM, New Bedford. The Ken Pittman Show, 1420 WBSM, New Bedford. We're back, right back to the phones we go. Um, let's uh, we're gonna move along here. It's two forty-five. Wow, this went by pretty quickly. I gotta tell you, thanks for calling. You are next. Hello, hi caller. Hey, would that be? What's up, KP? John, guy on the street. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Great. It's opening day, <laughs> and look how beautiful it is. You know what I mean? Opening day. The best story so far that I've heard about the Red Sox. Uh, or the biggest story, I shouldn't say best, is that one of the bright spots in the lineup, uh, Mr. Story's gone for the year already. Uh, se uh, seizing ending what? surgery. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, thank God we don't have Chris Sales anymore. <laughs> yeah. He was a flat tire for that team. He was you know? almost glue. He had a five-minute fix. Yeah, right. But this, oh, I don't know his name. He hit five home runs on that West Coast swing. Uh, he did two back-to-backs, and I think it was the last game when they played the Angels. And his his first at bat here, he just he crushed it. Is home that right? Run. Oh, what nothing sucks, brother. <laughs> yeah, but this is still going to be one of the first teams eliminated, from what I'm reading. The Sox? Yeah. Oh well, <laughs> well I can tell you, I can tell you, it's going to rain tomorrow. You know why? I don't know. Well, no, I know. You got to, things have to play out. And by the way, the Red Sox in 2013 were thought to be a, a seller dweller, and they, they did, ended up pretty, pretty good. So, did you see, did you see the opening? I don't know. No, you're, oh. in, yeah, you're at work. Who, who hit it? Connor Wong? Is that his name? I don't know. He's the one who hit five home runs on the West Coast. Hamilton? Is that his? He, wow, he's a moose. Big. <laughs> It's not the shortstop. Um, it can't be Hamilton. They got Kevin Millar up there uh, in, the, in the first sitting commentating. He is a funny son of a gun, man. Yeah, Millar's got a good personality. Who? Kevin Millar? Yes. No, he definitely has a good personality. Oh, they brought out the whole 2004 team. And uh, it was great to see uh, Wake. You know, as a, you know, they did a tribute to Wakefield. How's Manny? He died of uh, he died of cancer and yeah. a week, no no his wife died of cancer right a week later he did he was, di he was diagnosed soon so after the daughter the daughter got right up there she threw actually threw out the first pitch to Jacob Veritek who's been actually almost like a, a father to her now no, no kidding yeah that was so sweet when I gave each other a hug I, 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 that just that's awesome and they they got a big thing a big Hot out there for Tim Wakefield. I loved him. He was my favorite pitcher, believe it or not. You know, when he got, I always loved the story. Uh, Jim Leland talked about it when he was the uh, Pittsburgh coach. Yep. He was going to cut Wakefield, who was trying out for third base. Um, he was going to send him back down to the minors. He said, hey, coach, I got a knuckleball. He said, kid, everybody yeah. I bring in here that I'm cutting has a knuckleball. <laughs> but he yeah. did have it. He did have the knuckleball, didn't he? 
yeah. That, are you kidding? <laughs> Charlie Huff was another guy who had a knuckleball. Oh, yeah. But when the catcher can't catch the ball, that says something. That ball's not moving or it's like flat, like, you know, a piece of plywood in the way. It doesn't go anything and it stops. I just don't know how you throw strikes, how you throw consistent strikes. I like the Pirates. That was my National League team. Willie Stargell. Willie Stargell, right back then, that was a fun team to watch. Hell yeah. Oh, I, they were. I can still remember crying uh, when my CCD was raising money to for the uh, for the earthquake in Guatemala where Ro Roberto Clemente was killed, volunteering to help out. Yeah. He was one of my favorite players, on, not on the Red Sox. Wow. Yeah, well, look, hey, look at Big Poppy. Some guy trying to take him out over there in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I know it. Yeah, that's, that you was... You know what? He's an idol over there. There's going to be a statue of him over there. Anybody ha <clears throat> that had the gonads to try to shoot and kill him, what do you... I mean, that was like a deal. I'm not sure we know everything about that one. That was a really weird thing, but, um, yeah, he's they love him over there. I've been there... I think five times, and he's, uh, you know, he's the Tom Brady over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, you know what? Bill Lee is just like that in Cuba. <laughs> he is. He's, he's, a, he's a god over there. But hey, let me ask you this, and I mean this. Has there been a more important Boston Red Sox player in the last 100 years, Babe Ruth, Ted Williams included, than, than, David Ortiz and what he's done for the Red Sox in the postseason. Man, that's a tough decision. Well, they won a World Series with him. Well, they won two. Yeah, I, I, exactly. But I just, Wait, I they won three with David one. Ortiz. Did, was, David, got, you know? was, was David Ortiz on that team in 2013 when they won? Oh, uh, shh. Didn't you know he, didn't he hit that? I, I think he uh, hit a... Yeah, he hit a home run into the um, Detroit... In Detroit, didn't he hit uh, one into the bleachers? No, in, in Fenway, he hit a grand slam. I think that was 13. Mm, no uh, kid. Well, it, that escapes my mind. Okay. <laughs> well, by the way, you know, I, I have a lot of optimism for this team this year. They're starting, they're starting pitches. Uh, they all look good. And, uh, you know, the motto from uh, Coach Cora is, I got to get six innings out of these guys. And our bullpen will come in and win the rest of the game. Maybe he wasn't. And they're doing that. You don't see that anymore. Oh, how long ago <laughs> what it used to be? Oh, we got three innings out of sale. Okay. No, David you know, Ortiz wasn't on that team. I don't think he was on that team. I don't know, man. I ain't got to <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> oh, he was on the team. He was. David Ortiz was on that team. Yeah. 2013. He brought them three rings. Oh, my God. No, that wasn't after the bombing, right? No. Remember, they beat Detroit, and then they... Was it the Cardinals again? World champions okay. in 13. He, he was on the roster in, two, in 2004, 2007, and 2013. Ted, mm. Ted Williams was the greatest hitter maybe in all of baseball, but he never got, a, he never got Boston a World Series. Same for, and, and Babe Ruth uh, got, I think, one here, right, 2018, and then he got four for the Yankees. Maybe he got two here. I don't know. Yeah, but the Yankees don't count. But you know, I was I was a little surprised Ruth only got four. Uh, you know, when you think about the legend of Babe Ruth, I was a little surprised he only got four World Series with the Yankees. I thought it was more than that. Yeah, me too. Well, yeah. Him up. He, he was a Red Sox. That's Real quick, I John, what do you want the what do you want the pass to do with that third pick? Oh, man, that's tough. They're gonna go after that quarterback, I think. So UCLA, I, I'm not sure. UCLA. All right, I think he's. Hey, Pretty sure he transferred to, to um, Oregon, though. But okay, we'll be back. That's going to do it for me. Thanks for tuning in today. Barry will be back tomorrow, I think, or somebody will. I, don't know, I know it's not me, but uh, you can catch me 9 to noon on Saturdays. This is Ken Pittman for WBSM. Have a great evening.